everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz, your host here at Crimes Untold. And today's Crimes Against Pride or Crimes on Pride case, we're going to be talking about the Admiral Duncan pub bombing. The last year I did a few cases when it came to different, different crimes that affected a group, multitude of people. And this one is similar. So the Admiral Duncan pub is in, is in old or is on Old Compton Street, which is a Soho neighborhood in center, central London or center London. This is the oldest gay pub in London. Now this pub was founded back in 1832 and it was a trading area slash pub. And over the years, this would change and several very, like it would, it would serve several groups of people. So the first known attack in this pub was on February 4th of 1930. Now I'm only giving you a brief history of this pub and then we're going to get into the actual bombings. So February 4th, 1930 is when there was a brawl involving the Hoxton gang and the Sabini gang. That is not why we're discussing this pub. The Admiral Duncan would become a gay pub in the 80s but it still attracts a variety of people. So the set of bombings I'm discussing today is the 1999 London Nail bombings. So on the 30th of April of 1999, at around 6.05 p.m., there was a sports bag that was left at the Admiral Duncan pub. So this was actually bomb number three that was left in London by one person that wanted to cause a rise in homophobic, te homophobic tension and ethnic tensions. So this person was David Copeland, a self-described neo-Nazi. He was involved in other bomb attacks in Whitechapel on April 17th and Hanbury Street on April 24th. At these places, there was unattended bags that people became suspicious of and exploded at 6.37 p.m. So Mark Taylor, who was the pub's manager, was looking at the bag while it exploded, unfortunately. 83 people suffered from injuries and burns. Four people out of those 83 needed amputations and three died during the attack. David Copeland was actually near the area and could hear the explosion. When it went off. He was quickly suspected to be the one responsible for the other bombings as well, and just one hour prior to him planting the bomb in Admiral Pub is when he became a suspect in the other bombings. And then the Admiral Duncan Pub bombing happened, and it kind of sealed the nail in his coffin. He would be arrested later that evening at his home. So following this attack, it kind of led to a domino effect. Murders and injustices for the community happened. So the Sunday following the attack, this is when there was a large meeting organized in Soho Square. And it held speeches from the Metropolitan Police that they really tried to mend their relationship with the community. But the community would continue to be in turmoil. They, I will say this is the first time I've read where police really tried to rectify their relationship with the community following an attack like this, which is, it's nice to see, but it's also kind of like you've spent so many years not listening to a community and now you're listening to it because of this injustice of a bombing. So David Morley, who was injured in the attack, injured in the bombing, he would end up being murdered during a homophobic attack slash robbery. This was on October 30th, 2004, so a few years after. He and a friend were beaten near Hungerford Bridge and he would die due to his injuries. In December of 2005, the people that were responsible for his death were brought to justice and they were all found guilty of manslaughter, which is an injustice they should get first degree murder, but that's my thought. Another person that was injured in the attack is Jonathan Cash, who is a playwright, and he was working uh, during the bombings. And what's ironic is that he used the bombings as a basis for his play, which is called The First Domino. This play is basically an interview between a psychiatrist and hit a high security prisoner, and this prisoner is a terrorist and he's the main character. Later on in 2005, the Westminster City Council stated that all pride flags needed to be removed, saying that it was forbidden due to its local development plan. They said that businesses needed to apply to have these up. 
due to this semi-injustice, the media went nuts and allegations of homophobia and the I Love Soho campaign started. And basically, this campaign wanted the ability to fly rainbow flags. And it put pressure on the same council that ordered them to be removed. So they ended up reversing this. In response to the Admiral Duncan pub bombings, there is a memorial chandelier that has a plaque and an inscription to help memorialize those who died during the selfish sadistic act that this person did and also memorialize those who were injured in the blast. So that, my friends, is the Admiral Duncan bombings. Uh, it is a very, it's a very sad case. I have a lot more that are going to get even worse. Some that really make my skin crawl because thinking of the crime really hurts my mama heart. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in another crime on pride case.